Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome to Star Trek, the 25th anniversary, episode one of this point-and-click adventure that was brought out by Interplay in 1991 and then the enhanced version of 1992. Well, this episode, we're going to go through phase one, which is Demon World. Now, Demon World, the story behind this, settlers belonging to a religious sect have reportedly been attacked by demons, hence the name Demon World near their minds. Kirk and his company, Spock, Bones McCoy, and a red shirt, right? The landing party, typical landing party, must discover the truth behind these so-called demons. And this sort of episodic features of this game are great, and it's very much akin to what, you know, it used to be like when you watched the old Star Trek original series on television way back when, whenever that came out. Still being shown now on CBS, apparently. You can find it when you're going through some, some of the digital channels. So the player takes on the role of Captain James Kirk on board the USS Enterprise, a Starfleet vessel we all know, as we've seen in Star Trek. Right? It's split into two main modes. There's a bridge view mode where you can interrogate the computer, talk to the crew members, um, and then do um, starship combat. And then it then takes place uh, what happens on the planet, which effectively is... The landing party and the adventure part of the game. So anyway, um, you've got Scotty on the bridge, you've got Sulu, Chekhov, McCoy, you've got Spock, you've got Uhura, and of course you've got all the other red shirts as well. And this is very much a point and click ye olde adventure, which I've really been enjoying. The nostalgia value of this is great. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go through the demon world episode. I'm not going to talk all the way through it. All the voices on the enhanced CD-ROM version are that of the actors, and it plays very much like a an episode of Star Trek, as you'd imagine. But let's get into it, and look out for more on the vi videos in the series. Demon World. Though the Enterprise's primary mission is peaceful exploration, the galaxy holds many surprises. To be prepared, we are conducting a mock battle with the USS Republic. Captain Patterson reports the Republic is in position and ready to begin, Captain. The Republic is arming weapons and raising shields. I suggest we do the same, Captain. Raising shields. Arming weapons. I don't know how long she can take it, Captain. is crippled, Captain. Captain Patterson extends his congratulations, sir. Lowering shields and disarming weapons. Message coming in from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. Jim, the Enterprise is ordered to travel to Pollux 5. The natives report that alien life forms have been attacking the settlers near a mine at Mount Ida. You are to report to the High Prelate of the colony. The settlers are members of the Acolytes of the Star sect. The description of the attackers vary, but all say that the attackers resemble creatures from many Earth religions known as demons. Starfleet wants you to determine the nature of these creatures and to resolve the situation without bringing harm to the colonists. Starfleet out. Pollux 5.
entering standard orbit. Pollux 5 has recently emerged from an ice age, sir. It's spring at the moment, cool but tolerable. Sensors indicate previously documented flora and fauna. Nothing unusual. Pollux 5 system. An inhabited satellite of Pollux B. Pollux 5 has lately emerged from an ice age caused by large meteor strikes. It has recently been colonized by the acolytes of the star's religious sect. The planet is home to a wide variety of plant life, but insects and other lower life forms are the only known animals. Acolytes, fully acolytes of the stars. Inspired by old human religions, the acolytes of the stars are a group of deists that have colonized several worlds in this quadrant. The acolytes prefer a relatively primitive lifestyle reminiscent of the mid-21st century Earth rural communities. Acolyte missionaries regularly assist nearby Federation worlds during times of need or disaster. Major acolyte settlements are Nicolasi on Pollux 5, Germania on Maddox 2, and Kentigern on Haven's World. Robert and Given. Fully. High Prelate Robert Everett and Given. As High Prelate of the Acolytes of the Stars, see Acolytes. On the Galassi, Robert Engevin serves as political and spiritual leader for that religious colony. Engevin is the acting Federation contact on that world and is considered by Federation diplomats to be a fair and capable leader. Prelate, a title of religious leadership most commonly used by the governors of the Acolytes of the Stars. Message from High Prelate Robert Angevin, sir. Welcome, Enterprise. The High Prelate awaits you. Please, beam down and meet with him. Spark, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. This is so much better, gentlefolk. We are honored at your presence and hope you will find peace here in our haven. Captain, the flora on this planet is very interesting. I wonder how useful it may be for medicinal purposes. High Prelate Angiven waits patiently for you to decide what you will do next. Dr. Leonard McCoy, the finest doctor in Starfleet, wishes that he were on a warmer planet. James Tiberius Kirk, captain of the Enterprise. He's always happy to run an errand of mercy. Anson Everts, who has never been this close to snow before in his life, gazes with childlike fascination at the ground. Spock raises an eyebrow. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. We have received word that alien life forms are creating problems at your mining facilities at Idle Mountain. Tell me more. Most high prelate and given, I am honored to meet you. I consider it my divine duty to assist you in any possible way with the spawn of the devil. Been seeing ghosts and boogeymen, eh? I find that a little hard to believe. I'm Captain James T. Kirk. Certainly, Captain Kirk. Not aliens per se. We have encountered what we believe are demons at Idle Mountain. Creatures surely emerging from the very gates of hell. Our god would not test us thus without reason. So we believe your might and insight are our god's method to help us discover what is going on. Aside from seeing demons, has any hard data been collected? Any evidence I could see? Demons? Gates of hell? This is the 23rd century. Aside from seeing demons, has any hard data been collected? Any evidence I could see? A skeptic would consider everything merely anecdotal or unproven. 
My people will gladly tell you their own stories, so you need not hear it secondhand through me. What can you tell me about the mine itself? You're wasting the time of a starship capable of destroying this planet with campfire stories? No wonder you were dumped out here in the middle of nowhere. What can you tell me about the mine itself? The area is exceptionally stable tectonically, and easy for our machinery to work in, praise God. We've mined for hafnium and a variety of useful trace elements. The deeper we dig, however, the more anomalous the variety of minerals seems to be. Our Ignatiant brother Stephen has his own theories about why this might be. Either way, the anomalies inspired brother Canbury to conduct studies inside the mine. Yesterday, he reported discovering a strange door. A gate to hell, surely, for the demons caused a cave-in immediately. Canbury was trapped, unconscious, and the demons prevent us from rescuing him. We can only hope he is still alive. Thank you for your courtesy, Kirk. May you receive the guidance and protection of our God as you complete this divine mission. I am worried about Brother Chubb. Can you examine him, Doctor? A sturdy man of advanced years whose blue eyes meet yours with clarity, curiosity, and directness. You'll understand if I don't stand up, I hope. I am not well. The Tellarite appears completely at home surrounded by humans, but the wrinkling on his brow indicates a great deal of worry. Jim, this man has suffered severe physical injuries to his head and arm. The wounds have been adequately cared for. However, he has developed a Nugarian infection. If not treated swiftly, the effects can be fatal. The infection can normally be treated with hypoditoxin, but there's none on the Enterprise. I may be of some assistance. The Lorexian berry grows near the mouth of the cave. If I could acquire it, I would be able to synthesize the hypoditoxin from the berry. Unfortunately, the demons prevent us from approaching the cave entrance. Perhaps you could retrieve it for me. You see a small explosion, and the Klingon's hand falls to the ground with a dull thud. I guess they don't make Klingons like they used to, sir. This is not a Klingon, Captain. Not a real one. It is an organic construct, an android-like robot. It looks like a Klingon, but the appearance is entirely superficial. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. Captain, we registered phaser fire and an unknown energy beam. Is everyone okay? We're fine. Did you register any disruptor fire? No, Captain. Why? Are there Klingons down there? No, just an idea, Kirk out. Fascinating. I begin to suspect that we have stumbled upon something that the colonists would never have uncovered. What is it, Spock? I wish to gather further data before making a definite conclusion, Captain. The path is surrounded by some beautiful shrubbery. It's the Klingon's detached hand. This is a detached hand with some kind of circuitry in the palm, Captain. You take the Klingon's detached hand.
Jim, these are the berries we need to synthesize the hypodetoxin. We must get these to Brother Stephen quickly. You have retrieved a sample of berries. You have found the berries. Uh, bring them to my lab quickly. The settings on the Ardak 4 have already been adjusted. Simply place the berry in the machine and the hypodytoxin will be synthesized. The machine synthesizes a quantity of hypodytoxin. We've got to get this to Brother Chubb as quickly as possible, Jim. I never dreamed that Starfleet would be interested in my discoveries, Captain. But our God often surprises us. A multi-purpose workspace with fine, well-worn tools and equipment close at hand. A glass-fronted display of mineral specimens, including a meteorite. A few fossil shells. The skull of a cat-sized alien animal. And a very encrusted twist of metal. Assorted pieces of glass rest on this table from ancient beakers to double burners. An old-fashioned computer. It appears to have some type of simulation running. Thank you. You're most kind. I am Brother Stephen, an Ignatiate following the holy teachings with mind and soul alike. I believe the anomalous mineral readings in combination with evidence of ancient disturbances in this otherwise highly stable geologic location indicates previous habitation of the region eons ago. Why, Spock, you two should get along fine. He sounds just like you. I would be equally honored to discuss medicine with you, Doctor, as science with your Vulcan associate. Let me continue. I believe our god made humans, aliens, and demons all. If I could get a real demon into my study, I would bless our god for the opportunity, as I thank him for everything in this life. You tread close to unholy knowledge, Brother Stephen. I appreciate your prayers, Brother Roberts. Uh, Captain, if you and your people go up the mountain, I hope afterward you will visit me in my study, which is next door. I'm too old to make the trek myself, but I'm eager for knowledge. In return, I will offer you what insights our God grants these old eyes. I headed up the party that sought to rescue Brother Candry. Without warning, the demons appeared and attacked us as we approached the mine. Can you tell us what they look like? Like the demons that have plagued devout folk since before our people left the Earth. Huge, muscular demons with ruddy skin, truly the manifestation of evil, with bat wings, horns and talons, and a pointed tail. God preserve us all. One tore open my arm and I surely would have perished, but for my companions who bore me back down the mountain. The demons didn't follow you? No. Brother Candre was is my partner. I was on the communications link when the demons caused the rockfall and silenced him. He said he'd found a strange door with devilish writing. Truly, he came upon the gate of hell itself.
What a fascinating piece of equipment. Highly advanced technology. You see here, it seems to have been damaged, however. Take it to my workbench and let's see if it can be repaired. I fear my hands are too shaky to perform such fine work, but perhaps one of you can do it. Mr. Spock, see what you can do about that hand. This machinery is delicate, but I have managed to repair the circuitry. You are interested in my little museum of curiosities? Looks like a pile of junk if you ask me. Yes, tell us about these things. I enjoy talking about these treasures. Shall I go into mineral specimens? True curiosities, nothing more. I think they're very pretty, don't you? Shall I go into mineral meteorite? I believe this is evidence of the cataclysm which destroyed the moon of Pollux V eons past. I've constructed a theoretical model based on analysis of the planet's rings of what things might have been like. I think that the moon, like Earth's moon, would have made a total eclipse of the sun possible. I would have liked to have seen that. For conditions making a perfect total eclipse are rare in the universe. Our god creates great wonders. Shall I go into mineral specimens? Meteor fossil shells. One of the oldest forms I've seen on this planet. Our god makes beautiful things indeed. Shall I go into mineral specimens? Meteor fossil skull of a small alien animal. The skull of a modern Silati, the largest creature native to this planet, yeah, about the size of a house cat from Earth. The Silatis combine a rather insectoid pattern with four-legged reptilian form, including praying mantis-like forelimbs. Shall I go into mineral specimens, or would you twist of metal? This chunk of rock is a greatly weathered example of a vanadium tungsten alloy, which doesn't occur naturally. It is my best evidence that the area was previously inhabited. Shall I go into mineral specimens, or would you rather move on to something else? Very well. I can't imagine why, but if you have a further interest in any of this, take what you like. But please remember to return my treasures when you're done with them. Vintage 801286 of the mid 21st century. It is a fine museum piece. Mr. Spock, see what you can dig up from that old fashioned computer terminal. Captain, this appears to be a model of the Earth. Notice how it models the proper situation for a total eclipse. Captain, there are several weak points in the cave-in's structure. Careful use of our phasers from the top down should be able to clear it. Assume firing positions. This is incredible, Jim. I'm picking up faint life sign readings behind this door. This man is badly hurt and suffering from shock and exposure as well.
It was a near thing, but he'll live. Brother Candry is barely conscious and is lying still trying to regain his strength. A large metallic door is set in the structure. This looks like some of the hand security panels on the Enterprise. Fascinating, Captain. This door is made of an unknown material. It is clearly built by an alien race we have no knowledge of. It appears to be a security lock designed to open the door when the correct handprint is registered. Oh, thank you kind souls for saving my life. Let me rest here for a little before returning to report this miracle to Prelate Angiven. circuitry triggers a connection and the door opens. It appears to be an abstract piece of alien art. It looks like a control panel with slide switches. Fascinating, Captain. It is a diagram of a lunar eclipse of this planet. See how the red sphere of the moon is casting a shadow on the blue sphere, Pollux 5. This must be a very old piece of work, because this planet's moon was destroyed thousands of years ago. The machinery is waiting for the gravitational pull of another eclipse to activate it. An eclipse that will never come. And one other thing, Captain. This may also be a diagram showing the proper settings on that control panel. This control panel is a manual override for the alien life support equipment. Thank you for repairing our Somnambutron. Stop. You're trespassing on Federation territory. I welcome you on behalf of the United Federation of Planets. Who are you? Where you come from? We did fix your machine. Can we write the repair bill off against rent on this land? Stop. I welcome you on behalf... We call ourselves Nauians. Thousands of years ago, we saw that meteor impacts were going to cause an ice age. We created this huge underground shelter to preserve our race, keeping us in suspended animation until the planet had recovered. We programmed the machinery to revive us at the next eclipse, but we did not count on the destruction of our moon. Some advanced civilization. Perhaps you can tell us about the demons. Some advanced civilization. Perhaps you can tell us about the demons. The demons, as you call them, are created by a machine designed to keep intruders away from our sleep chambers. It pulls from the minds of any approaching creature their most feared enemy and produces replicas to scare them away. For you and your crew, it was Klingons. For the Tellerites, a wolf demon. And for the other humans, a demon from their religion. On behalf of my people, thank you for waking us. I will turn off the machinery which creates our guardians, so that they no longer bedevil those with whom we now share our home. Oh, whoa! Alas! The key is missing. I can do nothing. Even we will suffer the attacks of our own guardians unless the key can be found. I implore you, if you can help, please do so. Jim, think about that skull we picked up from Brother Stephen. Now look at this alien. See the resemblance? A child? No, I see many differences. This must be what our people who did not slumber have become. 
Still, I would like to see these remains properly interred, according to the precepts of our religion. May I keep this? Of course, I think you will get along well with the Pollux inhabitants, and I'm sure you will have interesting theological discussions. I think I should return it to where I got it from. Of course. You found the key. I can now turn off the machinery creating our guardians, and no more sentience shall be at risk. Surely the Holy One smiles upon us all. I have no way to thank you, Captain. But please carry this request from my people to yours. We have much ancient knowledge we can share, and we would like to join your Federation. Go in peace. I will be glad to accept your application to the Federation. We shall have a diplomatic envoy sent to make the final arrangements. We look forward to meeting them. We also look forward to having discourse with the colonists. Farewell. May the Holy One bless you. Live long and prosper. Kirk to Enterprise. Beam us up, Mr. Scott. Message from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the problems at Pollux 5 and evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. I might have known there weren't any demons. We all have demons of our own bones. The ones we can't confront are often the hardest to deal with. These demons were based on fear, Captain. A human failing. I don't know, Spock. Everything that I've ever read about demons describes them as having pointy ears.